Do you ever get the feeling that life is just chasing you around? That things are getting more and more hectic? Well, that's what life is for me at least, most of the year. And then comes summer and I move here to my small farm in southern Norway where time moves in another way, more slowly. It's ebbs and flows directed by other forces. There's always something to do on the farm, looking after my chickens, tending my goats and trying to chase the fox away when he comes to help himself to one of my plump and juicy ducks. And in today's program, I invite you to sample the flavors of my farm and the surrounding community of spin. I'll start off by making a refreshing and strengthening vegetable soup. We'll taste the artichokes and the honey. And for main course, I'll make smoked and grilled duck breast with a homemade wild garlic mayonnaise. My farm in the small hamlet of Viestar on the southern tip of Norway is not an impressive operation. When my grandfather lived here, it was just barely enough to survive. Today, enjoyment and appreciation of nature and of my roots are much more important than making a surplus. However, when I'm here during summer, I try to live off the land as much as possible. This is where you find my great big grapevine. So you can come here to study why Norway has not become a famous wine producing country. It's simply too cold even here in the very south of Norway. But one thing that will grow here however is corn. You know how wonderful it is with boiled sweet corn. Well one thing that might even be better is corn straight from the cob like this and not quite ripe. It's even sweeter. Mm. There are several things I like about having my own garden. One of them is, of course, to have vegetables for my cooking. But just as important is actually tending to the garden, walking around and weeding and watching it all grow. And perhaps the most important thing is just being surrounded by all kinds of edible things that I'm somehow responsible for. This is my world and I nibble at it. The tomatoes have been really slow this year, but they smell wonderful and they taste wonderful. Not really enough to use in any kind of serious cooking, so I end up eating most of them here in the greenhouse. This one I'm just cutting in two, dipping into some fine salt and pouring over 
one little drop of fine balsamic vinegar. And then I'm adding a little bit of chevreau, and that's all. A tiny, tiny little meal with lots of flavors. Mm. Now I'm going to make a very fresh tasting vegetable soup with some of the produce from my own garden. Here I have a green bell pepper, which I just cut in two and remove most of the seeds. And the uh, green bell pepper has a really strong kind of peppery flavor. And I have here a baked red bell pepper where I've removed the skin. The red peppers become really, really sweet if you bake them in the oven for quite a long time until, it, until the skin really loosens and you can just peel it off. And another thing that is really sweet is this, a carrot that I've boiled for too long until it becomes intensely sweet and almost too sweet to eat just as it is. And I'm adding this too. And making a vegetable soup is all about creating some kind of balance between the sweet flavors, the spicy flavors and the fresh flavors. And nothing tastes just as fresh as a cucumber that you've grown yourself. People say that cucumbers don't taste much. That is simply not true. They taste of freshness itself. So I'm using about a little more than half of this small cucumber. Then I'm adding a little bit of beer just for some liquid. This is good Norwegian beer, but you can use kind of a, a, a lager type beer or a pilsner as well. And you can, of course, if you must, use alcohol-free beer as well. Now, I'm going to serve it in just a normal glass. Uh, and you can see it's really kind of thin and liquid. And what it lacks now is a bit of spice and a bit of saltiness. Now, what I'm going to add is one of the things in my garden that I never tend to. The oregano has gone wild, so it belongs to the place. So what I do now is pick up, up a few of the leaves here and crumble them together with a little bit of salt. It looks like it doesn't do much, but, but actually the salt helps uh, tearing up the leaves a bit and that releases a lot of uh, flavor. So it smells wonderful here now. And I also use the flowers mainly for decorative purposes, but it does have a kind of hint of sweetness from the nectar inside. And last but not least, I'm going to do something that you should probably not do at home. I'm going to use one of the eggs from one of my chickens, the freshest egg you can get, and it is completely safe to eat in a raw state, which your eggs, in the store-bought eggs, probably are not. Uh, I'm going to use an egg yolk here on top. So what you should do at home is probably poach the egg first, then it's safe. And this is it. It's a really kind of strengthening, fresh tasting vegetable soup with an egg yolk. The local 
mailman, Aivin, who's been working here since before I was born, has put up a few beehives here on the outskirts of my farm. The honey he makes is excellent heather honey with one extra advantage. When I eat it, I know that most of it has been collected on my property. Hi. Hi, hi. Du tog deg en pause. Ja. Har du lest på? Ja, veldig, veldig gjerne. Ja. Veldig gjerne. Er det lyng eller sommer? Det er lyng. Det er lyng, ja. Det er så god. Kjempeflott. Takk skal du ha. Hei. Ha det. Ha det. Du står i agurkåker nå? Ja, jeg... Får jeg smake, eller? Ja, vær så god. Ja, det var nydelig, ja. Du, kan jeg få noen av disse her, eller? Så gjerne. Ja, vi prøver den her. Må ta litt lang stilk. Oi. Kan jeg ta denne her, eller? Så gjerne. Ja. Kjempeflott. Bare hyggelig. Takk skal du ha, Jorgen. I now have something sweet in my basket and something that in this stage is incredibly bitter. If you just taste a fresh, raw artichoke, it is so bitter that it's one of the most unpleasant things you can taste. But when you boil it for about 25, 30 minutes, all the bitterness is transformed to sweetness. And uh, the artichoke actually contains an enzyme which stimulates the sweet taste buds, so it makes the whole world taste a lot sweeter. I've now reached one of my favorite spots, because here everything smells of garlic. That's because this small dark valley here is completely covered with wild garlic or ramsons. The farmers here would just hate ramsons because if the cows ate only a few of these green leaves, the taste would be so strong that it would flavor the milk and the farmers wouldn't be able to sell the milk on the market. And one clove like this is quite tiny, is at least twice as powerful as a clove of garlic. I am now going to make a dish that has a certain element of nostalgia to me a grilled and smoked duck breast. And it isn't really the flavor of it that uh, brings out the nostalgia in me, but it is the fact that the little duck has been walking around there with his brothers. And now he's up here with me in a quite different state. But I'm going to honor him by preparing him at least as well as I can. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a crisscross pattern in the fatty skin of the duck, so it'll crisp up very nicely. Trying not to cut too much into the meat itself. Now, I fear that I might just have cut a little too deep into the skin here. That will allow the smoke to flavor the meat as well, not just the skin, so it has its advantages. So I'm rubbing the breast here with salt, adding a generous amount of pepper. I'm going to flavor the duck breast additionally by adding a few cloves and a little bit of mustard seeds. You can also use some normal Dijon mustard. And I'm crushing it here with pestle and mortar. 
Now I've crushed this into a fine powder. I'm going to rub the duck with it twice. I'm going to rub it first now before I grill it and then afterwards together with the honey. So I'm just using a little less than half of it. And now the duck is ready for the grill. I'm exposing it to some real, real heat here. I'll leave it on the grill for three minutes with skin side down. That should be enough time for the skin to become really, really crisp. But it's not enough time for the heat to penetrate into the meat, but that, that is something that's going to happen later on, especially when I'm smoking it. Now it's been on the grill for about seven minutes. I had to struggle with a few flames here, so it's been a little bit charred, but um, well, nothing's perfect, is it? I'm going to rub it with some honey, the honey from the postman, uh, and I'm just using my fingers and rubbing it on, and it melts as I am rubbing it since the duck is hot. You could also just mix it with some uh, oil or even some vinegar. Ah, sticky stuff, eh? And the rest of the mustard and clove combination. And a teensy bit of salt, don't you think? And that's it. I now place it on the grill, on the side furthest away from the coals. Add some wood shavings. So you can use hickory, you can use apple wood. And as if that was not enough, I'm going to add one more extra smoky flavor. Juniper is growing wild here and is very popular in all, with all kinds of uh, smoked meats here in Norway. <laughs> but it does hurt. You can also use just a small handful of juniper berries. Now I'll let the duck breast smoke here in uh, the grill and the grill works as an oven when it uh, has a lid and it works as an oven where the temperature is gradually being reduced from about 400 Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius to about 200 Fahrenheit, a little less than 100 centigrades and that's really the perfect way to cook a duck. I'm just going to serve it with some grilled zucchini and a, a green salad. But first, for starters, I'm going to have the artichokes that I got from Jordan. Some people insist that you should trim the artichokes before you cook them or at least before you serve them. But they are so beautiful when they are like this. So I ask my guests just to be a little bit careful while they're eating it. And that also adds a bit of excitement to the eating process as well. So the only thing I do is just remove most of the stems and look after you know, small leaves and things like that. And that's basically it. I'm going to boil them in lightly salted water. And the only thing that is perhaps a little bit special in the way that I cook artichokes is that I add just a small pinch of baking powder to help retain the green color of the artichoke so it doesn't turn all brown. And that happens even if the water is just slightly acidic. And I'm letting it boil for about 25 to 30 minutes. And now I'm going to make a wild garlic mayonnaise with the wild garlic or the ramson that I picked. What do you think? Two cloves should suffice? 
taking into consideration that they're twice as powerful as garlic? I don't think so. Three? No. Four? No. Five. Because the last one is really tiny. So just trim away the ends of it. You can also use just normal fresh garlic and add a little bit of chopped chives to the mayonnaise and it won't be as ramson, uh, it won't be as wild garlic, but it will have something extra and, uh, and the, the chives will, will add some of that extra flavor. So, And an egg yolk. Oh, look. This is a twin. Doesn't happen very often, but uh, every two weeks or so, I get a twin egg, and I think it's very special. And then some mustard. Have you ever tried to make homemade mayonnaise and it has split on you? Well, if you add a, a teaspoon or so of mustard, it helps the emulsification and then the process doesn't feel so dangerous and intimidating when you know that there's a fair chance that you will actually succeed. You should also note that all the ingredients should be at room temperature. That helps the emulsification. And if the eggs are cold and the oil is warm, then it may be more difficult for them to emulsify. Start off with just a couple of drops of oil. Couple more. Be very, very restrictive with the oil in the beginning. And then you can add more and more. Now this is just a very neutral rapeseed oil. You can also use sunflower oil or if you want a more kind of aioli style garlic mayonnaise then you should add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And when the mayo is starting to thicken like this I add the juice of half a lemon. And then I continue pouring in oil until I've used uh, three cups, uh, seven and a half deciliters. Now the artichokes are done and that previously oh so bitter taste has been transformed to something oh so sweet. And you see at least most of the color is retained here. And look how wonderfully thick that homemade mayonnaise has become. Mo many people like to serve artichokes with butter. I think that a, a real garlic mayonnaise gives a lot more to the artichokes than just plain butter. Now the meat has been smoking for about 35 minutes and should be done. And I'll let the meat rest here while we eat the artichokes. Doesn't it look fantastic? Ah, oh, it smells wonderful at least.